Hey, everybody, we're hitting the mailbag pretty hard on today's show, answering some strategy, some start-sit decisions, as well as breaking down this Thursday night matchup with air quotes, if that's what you want to call it. Don't miss a second of today's show. Uh, this is D.D. Westbrook here with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Excited to be here. Wednesday, December 11th. Right in the middle of the week. Semi-final playoffs on the way. Mike Wright is here. Hello. Jason Moore is present. Let's do it, Foot Clan. Let's get these hashtag Foot Clan titles. You seemed very unsure that it was hashtag. But then you like pivoted into like, that's just, just the cadence that I was going to do for just, emphasis. That was just how I emphasized, my man. Today we have buy sell. We've got a Thursday night preview. We've got mailbag questions galore. We're trying to get your team ready, get it right. There are going to be some names on your roster. All you champions out there that you didn't expect at the beginning of the season, but will be heralded as uh, in 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 fame forever if you win a title mm-hmm. with them. The old herald. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's to to go and proclaim their name mm-hmm. out yeah. at the public square. Justin Watson. Oh dear. Hark, hark, and the herald. Yeah, it's seasonal too, Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram dot com slash fantasy footballers. We're on YouTube. We're everywhere you listen to podcasts, and we appreciate it when you leave us a review. Subscribe to the show. We are a year round fantasy football podcast, so it does not stop. Mm. Once you have that trophy. Mm. In fact, you probably got that trophy because you listened to us the whole year long. Once you, or at you, least you, we helped contribute. When you get the trophy, that's just the beginning of next year. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's the beginning of your reign. And the beginning of the reign is it's wonderful. You, you know you have 365 days ahead of you to make the people in your league feel less than. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, last week we did a Fantasy Playoffs edition. One of the buy sells was kind of omitted. Josh Jacobs didn't play. Now, we all sold him as a top 12, so that's a win. I think we all got it right. He was not a top 12. It's just facts. And then I got all the rest of them right. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. I feel like I'm on a pretty good streak in recent weeks with the buy sell, oh. but that's based on the perfection of last week mostly. All right, Baker Mayfield, a top twelve quarterback. We all sold that. He ended up quarterback twenty four. Uh, Todd, <laughs> it's a really small, just a little, little fart sound there. Little fart. Uh, Todd Gurley ended up with uh, 113 total yards. DJ Chark, before he got injured, went up above the 60 receiving yard which mark. Was, which was news. Oh, my goodness. This was breaking news to Jason. Right before the show began, I, he was shocked. My mind was blown when I saw that he was 9 for 75. I mean, we watch all these games. We're, we're here watching every moment. Almost. <laughs> well, yeah, apparently, because I just don't remember Chark doing jack squat. And then I'm like, 10 targets, 9 receptions. Where? How did I miss all of that somehow, it blew my mind. And then Tyreek Hill ended up the wide receiver 39, so uh, far away from the top 15 area. Let's do a semifinals edition. I'm excited to talk about this player. Buy or sell Joe Mixon with 10 fantasy points versus New England. That's an easy buy for me. Yeah. 10 fantasy points is not difficult for Joe Mixon. He didn't do it against Pittsburgh. No. But, but he's he did it done against, it against he, everybody else. Yeah, he did it against Baltimore. He did it against the Rams. He did it uh, last week. He was the third-ranked 
fantasy running back. He just gets too much work, and with Andy Dalton there in the passing game and Mixon's ability to break off one or two big runs regardless of the opponent, I'm easily buying that. Yeah, I, I'm going to buy it as well. Too, too involved and too talented a player, even on a bad team with a bad matchup. 10 is a low bar. We're not saying he's going to have a phenomenal week. We're just saying he's going to get the ball enough. Bye. He is up to... Mike um, is leaving. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> have a good one. Uh, that's bye bye Oh, that's different. Yeah. That's what people were doing with Joe Mixon through the first few weeks of the season. And I do not blame them. And Because uh, he was... He st yeah, I, I still believed that Joe Mixon. Yeah, it, it pulled through. Just just the player that he is. If Joe Mixon was on, I don't know, the Baltimore Ravens, he would be the best running back in football. I believe that. The best running back in yes. football? Yeah, the best. Yeah, if you put him on that team to succeed, I, who, who's better than him? It's a bold declaration. I guess McCaffrey yeah, it would, would be in that category. I would definitely say yes. But, I mean, I think he's a top five he's, running back. He's in the group of most talented running backs is the point you're making. Yeah, if you, if you flip-flop teams with Zeke and, and him, he'd be, you know, he'd be a top five guy. I just think he's that talented. Odell Beckham Jr., will he be a top 15 wide receiver at Arizona? This is is tough for me because if I have a chance this season to bet against Odell Beckham Jr. You've taken it every I, time. Uh, and it's been great. Yeah. It's, I've taken it, and I've taken it to the bank. But Arizona is buh bad <laughs> They are – I mean, they're, they're just they're just a, 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 just a steaming pile of donkey dung. So this is a really great line. I'm going to sell – As they say. I'm going to sell – that he does not get a top 15 performance against the hapless Arizona Cardinals. I can't buy two top 15 wide receivers from the Cleveland Browns, so I will not buy the wide receiver two finishing there. I will sell. Just two games this entire season as the wide receiver 16 or better for your first round pick, Odell Beckham Jr. I'll buy it. I'll buy a top 15 performance against Arizona. I don't blame you. I've watched Arizona. <laughs> Kyler Murray is at home against Cleveland. Oh. The last two weeks have been disasters for Kyler. QB 20, QB 25. I don't. I, I feel like they moved the ball into the red zone on every drive against Pittsburgh and then didn't ever score. Well, they didn't realize it's called the red zone because it's, like, it's dangerous for the defense. But they, they're like, red zone, we're supposed to stop here. Right? Oh, they think it's a light yeah. situation. Red light, green light situation. Yep. Classic. Oh, dude. Just He's a rookie. He doesn't understand. Just let him know it's the green zone. Green zone, yeah. And green then, means go. <laughs> well, let's see what you believe. I, I'm can, buying. Can you teach him this soon? I am buying. He's He's been on a terrible streak. Uh, he's looked to me to be bad, scared, <laughs> and little bitty baby. Bad, but, scared, little bitty baby buy. Yeah, but the reality is his rushing uh, ability – can always propel him into the top 12. He has so many performances up in the top 12 through the year. I mean, you've talked about it. He can move down to the 20s. Some games he throws multiple touchdowns. At other games, he doesn't throw any. I'm going to buy that this is a good Kyler week. I am in. I'm selling it. I don't think we're going to. It's just been really bad in Arizona. So I'm going to go ahead and sell it. Yeah, it has. <laughs> it's been bad. You're on the fence, Mike? I am because I'm, I'm just. Trying to remember what Kyler Murray's actually done this year, and he's still the quarterback seven. And the last two weeks have absolutely been garbage, but the three right before that, six, four, and seven quarterback on the week at home. I'm going to – I got to fix this my is rankings. His third straight – by the way, the QB 20 and QB 25 weeks were both at home against the Rams and Pittsburgh. It's close. I'm going to buy it. Okay, you're in. You're in. Hunter Henry, five receptions against Minnesota. I'm going to – Man, what happened? <laughs> we got a touchdown last week. But I'm, but he he came off of the injury, and he was just dominating. And Phil Rivers was like, oh, holy crap. Hunter Henry's back on the team. Let's give him the ball. And then he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm over this. Yeah. I'm, I'm over using Hunter Henry. I think they use him enough week in and week out. I, I really do. Uh, you know, he's had two weeks enough, ago. Two receptions a game. That's enough for you? When you get a touchdown, now it's not necessarily enough. What about enough. two for ten? Mike Williams has been healthier, and Austin Eckler has been further integrated into a slot-wide receiver. 
I, mean, I you, think that's you played, mean awesome Eckler. Yeah, awesome Eckler. You, yeah, I will sell it. Five receptions, too much. I think four. Five receptions is a lot. I think four is more. That, I thought that, you just bought. I didn't. I didn't oh, make okay. my declaration, but okay. I am going to buy. I am going to buy. I you know the last couple games haven't been there, but I think that the Minnesota game could turn into more of a surprising shootout. Mm. Um, you know they can be beat through the air, so I, I'm going to buy here. Hunter Henry has done it in four of nine games. I will buy. Ah, with such I don't like conviction. Uh, I don't like it. Oh, nope, not confident about 44 it. Forty-four and a half point over under in that game. It's in Los Angeles. I'm with Jason. I think that game ends up being uh, a little bit Sneaky. more more prolific on the scoring side. Whew, sounds like you should play Philip Rivers, Jason. But I'm still selling the five receptions. I think you just endorsed Philip Rivers as a fantasy quarterback. Yes, you did. You you proclaimed him your champion. I don't. You, I don't you believe that, I don't Herald. believe that the Foot Clan wants to either watch or hear vomit. <laughs> Please stop with your words and don't ever say kind things from me to I, Mr. You're Rivers. the one who said it. Mike, did you get to did you get to hear the clip of, of Philip Rivers that was circulating yesterday? The of him on the field talking garbage. Yeah, yeah. when he was screaming about ninety yard, yard touchdown, yeah. and then he's like, "Yeah, but please don't yell in my ear." And he's like, "I will yell in your ear. I will yell <laughs> in seems, your ear." It seems so much like Talladega Nights to me when he's doing that. <laughs> he's like, "Yes, I will. I will yell in your ear." <laughs> and then uh, Brooks, I said no offense. <laughs> Brooks really wants to know about Todd Gurley again, so he's got him in here. I think we all want to know top ten running back against Dallas. Todd Gurley. Been getting the work, been producing. He's the RB12 on the season. He has five top 10 finishes, including two in a row. Somehow, that's, somehow that's more than Chris Carson, Nick Chubb, and Leonard Fournette. Yeah, it's because touchdowns. The, um, I'm, I like Todd Gurley this week. I think he's a good option. They are clearly focusing the offense. We talked about the snap percentage for Cooper Cup and for Brandon Cooks being very low, some of that was because they were winning heavily in the you know in the fourth quarter. But a, another part of that, and McVay came out and talked about it, was because they are focused on getting the line right and being able to run the ball. If that takes you know ten other guys in to block for Gurley, they're doing it. That being said, I do feel like the line at ten is a little too high, so I'm going to sell begrudgingly. I'm selling as well, Mike. Dallas has been kind of middle of the pack against fantasy running backs, but just looking back at their recent schedule, Chicago, Buffalo, I guess shutting Singletary down, or they didn't shut him down, but I mean Singletary is of note, New England, Detroit, and then they got absolutely torched by the Minnesota running game. I, I'm going to buy Todd Gurley. I'm buying the resurgence that he is back to the focal point, and, unless they give me one of those – Surprise Malcolm Brown touchdowns <laughs> where like I I was with Jason that the first rushing touchdown of Malcolm Brown was absolutely shocking where it seemed like they got down to the one and then they were running in even and the the television producers couldn't keep up the Rams explode into the end zone you're like oh sweet Gurley got a touchdown and then it's just Malcolm Brown <laughs> threw a smoke bomb down he's like guess what it's me Malcolm Todd Gurley ripped off his face. <laughs> It was like, ha ha, you thought it was Todd Gurley. It was me the whole time. Those plays are always rough, too, because I, I didn't, you know, I didn't see Gurley when he ran off the field. That's what, it was real so, fast. So it's one of those things where, you know, Gurley could have thrown his hand up and been like, I need one. But, you know, because that happens from time to time in a very annoying fashion for fantasy owners. But, yeah, you never know. He has been playing well, and your odds for a good performance go up when you have increased touches, which is what's finally happening. I mean, we've seen the breakdown over the course of, you know, the last two years versus this year, he's like five or six touches fewer per game. They need to get back to that level because they, they were pretty good when Todd Gurley was running the ball. Yeah. All right, that was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. You can check them out, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get yourself some sports memorabilia. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, the Redskins officially placed Darius Geis on injured reserve, a sprained MCL. This season is over. This is the time of year when 
smallish injuries just in, they all go to IR. You're going to miss a couple weeks, you're done, but it's so sad. Marvin Jones on injured reserve, wide receiver for the Lions. Ankle See? ankle injury. See oh. the smallish injury part? Yeah, it's just, you know, IR sounds so like terrible. Yeah, that's fair. Uh no Marvin Jones though. That's that's disappointing. Kenny Galladay, I was looking at the last, you know, eight uh since week 8. He's he's a like top five point per game wide receiver in that span, despite the Driscoll Blau period of his life, which I'm and sure the, one day he'll talk to a counselor about. And this week he has just the creme de la creme matchup, so it's it's you know full steam ahead. Is, would, is it is the phrase? I think so. Yes. I mean, you, you could take the narrative both ways. Of it, he's the only show in town, but. He's the only show in town. Is can can Kenny Galladay and David Blau overcome I, that? I, if, I, I'm into I'm into Galladay against okay. Tampa. He's too big, too fast, too strong. If this was a different matchup, I would say Marvin Jones going down could hurt Galladay. But I don't think Tampa can hurt Galladay. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, they don't have the personnel, and they're they've even lost. You know, they they were already the worst, and they they lost one of their major pass rushers. So it's like, great. yeah, I'm d I'm kind of done doubting him considering the fact that we've we've gone through with the quarterbacks. Is, is there a sneaky PPR play on Detroit when you have to trust David Blau and but you are facing the Tampa secondary? Hey, you man. know, Danny Amendola, you don't have Hawkinson there anymore either. He's on IR, so th there's Jesse James. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't trust Blau enough. To make someone like a Danny Amendola, like Danny Amendola has had eight targets the last two weeks. That's great. Except they were David Blau targets, and you know he's ended up Blau. with I believe sixty yards combined in those two games. Sixty-six. Alshon done for the season. I think we saw this coming. Talked about it yesterday. Do we have an update yet on what that injury is? Hey, Giamatti, you got anything? I'll check on. You've that. been on the phone with Alshon. Give him a call. Let us know. I'm just I'm concerned, man. Like long term. Yeah, he's older. So yeah, if he's it is older. A, if it's a serious injury, if it's Achilles, or if it's something, if it's an Achilles injury, he's done. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's, he's not Manuel he doesn't Sanders. Re recover well from anything. No, I mean he he even when he has good games, you find out later that he had a severe shoulder injury during them. I mean he is one of the most redundantly injured players that exists. So. They need to completely fix their wide receiver core in totality heading into next year. If you want to know whether you have the future in Carson Wentz, you cannot be targeting uh, Greg Ward for the duration of the season. I was thinking about this very, very selfishly um, as I am forced into playing Carson Wentz in my playoffs this week again. It you could always go Rivers. Week. It's Dynasty, so I can't, but also shut your <laughs> mouth. Um <laughs> No, but I was like, Antonio Brown is out there. Tweet <laughs> like, come on! Antonio Brown will go right onto the the commissioner's list if he's signed. That's why no one has signed. But I mean, him. if you're the Eagles, if you're the team, and you're like, okay, we're we're being gifted playoffs here. We we shouldn't be, but we're in. But we don't have anybody to throw the ball to. You are. I mean, forget Antonio Brown. You're looking at every wide receiver that is out there in the world saying. I've got to find people to come in who maybe I can sign off the street or something. And then there's Antonio Brown out there. Like, you got to kick a tire, right? It's just my <laughs> thought. Hey, there's a tire. Let's kick it. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably don't think so. I mean, so. I get it. I get it. All right, this is good news. Lamar Jackson, he's going to start Thursday's game against the Jets. They are Mondo favorites. We've got the preview coming up shortly. Quad injury, question marks. Holy goodness. I just looked at the line. Yeah, it's like, what, 14 and a half? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they're at yeah. home against the Jets. That's the real uh, crux still, of the argument. Still, man, two oh, that is greater than two touchdowns. That is nowhere near high enough. I would genuinely bet that they cover that. Well, Lamar is it, going to be in your fantasy lineup. There's yeah. no real evaluation here. Yes. If, if he's active, you play him. He's active. You're going to play him. And this seems like the kind of game to me that the Jets, it is an actual like scientific impossibility to win the game. Like I don't think there's any possible way that they could do it. The quad injury is the way. I mean, this is Even like if Lamar Jackson walked on his hands, 
I think they lose by 10 points because the defense – how are you going to score on Baltimore with Sam Darnold on the road? I don't know how it's yeah. going to happen. Lamar Jackson could could not throw a single pass in this game and Baltimore would win. Yeah, after I said it, I regretted it because I'm like, <laughs> Robert Griffin could beat this Jets yeah. team with, with the defense and the running game. And that's not – I mean, I don't know. I guess that's an insult to the Jets. It is, and it should be taken as such. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also just a compliment to that defense. There are just situations where, you know, you just can't do it. it it's the same situation as uh, – look at how Pittsburgh's winning games right now. Yeah. yeah. They're winning games with Duck Hodges. Ugly. And if, if, if the Jets were traveling to Pittsburgh on Thursday night this week, I would say that they should be 10-point underdogs regardless of Duck Hodges. All right. Don't forget to check your waiver wire. I saw many of you, congratulations, by the way, um, releasing Aaron oh. Rodgers into the into the pool. <laughs> the, plan, the plan is being executed. Please work. I was going to say, I realized today when I saw these screenshots <laughs> from the play, play, bench plan, of Aaron, or play, 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 play cut. cut, that this could turn very poorly for us as a show. If Aaron Rodgers goes out and does like a, and Brooks is nodding. Yeah. I think it's, I heard Jason saying this this morning. Did I, you really? Yeah, this is, you you weren't in yet, and I I saw someone screenshot that you know Aaron Rodgers was cut, and I just I said we are going to feel something big on Monday. We're either <laughs> going to feel really good, we predicted the future in advance and it worked out, or we're going to feel horrific. Well, I saw a lot of you know Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, one hundred percent. Was I the pi- was the pickup for many of you when you dropped Aaron Rodgers? Is that dependent on Devonta Parker? I mean, if he doesn't have Parker, would you still play Tannehill? I, I don't oh. think he's going to have Parker. I was hearing Fitzpatrick. <laughs> now, yeah. what if Tannehill added Devonta Parker? Oh, he'd, be, he'd probably go up. Let me. What if I told you this, Jason? Since week nine, Philip Rivers is averaging more points per game than Aaron Rodgers. Keep saying stuff like this I so would, that people know that we're not just insane. I keep, would keep believe talking. it. That's a very low bar, though. Since week nine, Matt Ryan is averaging more points per game than Aaron Rodgers. Well, yeah. And Matt Ryan has been horrifically bad. Well, that's because Aaron Rodgers has been horrifically bad. Yeah, I mean, for fantasy. Exactly. For Aaron fantasy. Rodgers, since the, in this time span I'm talking about, since week nine, Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback 22. 22 is not a good number. How do you feel about this? And whole- that includes a number two overall finish. Well, here's here's the thing about that. If you take a look at that number two finish, okay, that is the only – and this is since week nine. That's a, that's a lot of weeks. That's six weeks ago. He has one performance, that, that quarterback two finish, that is in the top 20. Yes. That's uh, the only one uh, that is in the top – this is what I will bet on. I was going to say, you're betting on that. Yeah. Now, the the problem is that there's a QB2 performance in the middle of that run. Against the Giants. Uh, is That's that who it was? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we didn't even go back to the Oakland game, right? No. Oakland game, he was, was QB1. Seven. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know who we played last week? Washington. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm st- stick to the plan, everyone. The problem's going to be if no, Mitch, don't get nervous now. I'm nervous. <laughs> as is often the case in fantasy football, Mitch Trubisky is the problem here. Mitch Trubisky is the real problem. If he Mitches his way <laughs> to some points in Green Bay, you'll have a problem. That's what I think. But you have to play the odds, and Maybe. you need you need to win your week, and your odds on playing Aaron Rodgers and winning at the quarterback position are low against Chicago when he's been. You know, five of six weeks outside the top twenty. Yeah, you you, you certainly don't want to put. We are if, we are rationalizing to ourselves now. No, gentlemen. I mean it's just true. If if you don't want to cut him and you don't want to go that far for the sake of the joke or for the sake of the landmine to your opponent, that could work out. Regardless, you sh- should probably not be playing Aaron Rodgers. You should look for a better option. I thought I had a playoff matchup against our friend uh, Michael Butler in our dynasty league because he told me that we were playing each other next week. I was so excited. Because he has Aaron Rodgers and no other option. And then I found out I'm I'm not playing. Mm. That's oh, very sad. Okay. Weird end of the story. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a piece of news. Grab the Sleeper app. And we want to pause before our Thursday night preview and thank today's sponsor. I'm talking about HelloFresh. You've heard us talk about them before. They're America's number one meal kit. Easy seasonal recipes, pre-measured ingredients, delivered right to your door. All you got to do is cook and enjoy. Maybe you're in a little bit of a dinner rut. 
HelloFresh has it figured out with their new recipes and basically everything. You're talking about a wow-worthy dinner on the table, wow. just 30 minutes. Yeah, that's what you say when you see it. That's what you say when that, you eat it. That's what Owen Wilson would say. And uh, look, we've all, all three of us, we've used HelloFresh mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, occasionally, frequently, really, we come in here and we're like, have you had those burgers with the grilled onions that they got sent last night? Dude, when we made the pickles out of cucumbers, like in my kitchen, and yeah. then they were delicious. Oh, yeah, yeah it's it. great. And uh, you can get nine, listen to this, nine free meals with HelloFresh. Wow. See? <laughs> By going to HelloFresh.com slash footballers9, and you use the code footballers9. That's HelloFresh.com slash footballers9, and use the code footballers9 for nine free meals. Wow. 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 want to thank today's sponsor, Sonos. This holiday season, immerse yourself in all your favorite Holiday classics with a new home theater system from Sonos. Look, you get the Sonos system, you hook it up, you you, you download the app. The whole process is is very enjoyable. Uh, just unboxing the Sonos, knowing what's about to happen, the sound quality that's that's about to occur in your bedroom, it is fantastic. We all have Sonos systems. I love it. I've turned mine into my Amazon Alexa. Bring that thing in the bathroom. I crank out the jams while I'm cleaning out the bod. <laughs> oh my goodness! You don't like to do that? Oh, dude, that's that's a pro tip. I mean, you know, I'm I'm right there with you, Mike. Look, you can wirelessly connect all your speakers to create your perfect sound system. You can play carols and more with the the TV's off. You got the carols still going. Tis the season. Hark the herald, as we have been saying all show. Dude, Sonos is awesome. I say, I tell I say Alexa, play play Christmas music in my living room. And then it's like, yeah. Ooh, yeah. The sound quality is wow. fantastic. <laughs> Look, it's, it's not a joke. We all have Sonos systems. I love my Sonos system throughout my house. And go to Sonos.com to learn more and complete your holiday shopping. All right. Let's talk Thursday. Thursday Night Breakdown. I'm not going to get into it, Jason. But, like, while you were talking, some sort of let's kick the tires on AB Philadelphia, while you were doing that, Antonio Brown was uh, he's, he's handling Twitter, was again. working on his Twitter some more. Amazing. Yeah. I, my favorite part of this whole thing is how you said, I'm not going to talk about it, then <laughs> just talked about it. Like, not the details. Oh, I wasn't okay. going to get into the oh, details about ooh. the tweets and things like that. Uh oh, so he's out? <laughs> I'm just, I was just saying, like, maybe you don't look his direction. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the gosh. Jets at 5 and 8, at the Ravens 11 and 2. Ravens are Mondo favorites, as I said. 14.5 point favorites. 30 point implied point total. The Jets at 14.5. Vegas looking at the game and saying, we don't care about your quad because we got you at 30 points. Uh, you know, I, do you have confidence or the gut to trot out? Do, do, do you have it? Jets offensive options for fantasy nope. football purposes. No, I don't. I benched Robbie Anderson yeah. in the, the the dynasty league where he was a big part of my win last week. Um, no, I'm not. Uh, I there's there's no option here. I mean, Lev Bell would be. I assume he's going to be back, and he's probably a must-start wide uh, running back two option. I don't think the upside is there, but he gets enough work to be Levy on Bell, or you were you were able to pick up DeAndre Washington off the waiver wire. Yeah, I was, was going to mention they added Rod S yes. Smith to their team. It's looking like Josh Jacobs is likely to miss again. So uh, Washington I would, would start again. I would go with my start of the week. Spoiler. This is the second start of the week we've talked about. DeAndre Washington. So that sounds like Le'Veon Le Le Bell is not a must play then. Well, no, he's not a must play. Right now he's my running back 22. So, uh, th like I said, a, r a running back two that you're probably going to play. You know, you're uh, you're going to play play him over Sony Michelle and, and options like that. All right. Uh, Lev Bell on the road in Baltimore. Probably a very – I mean, he's already been a low-ceiling player. So you're looking at, like – Hoping for eight to ten points from him. Le'Veon Bell or Kareem Hunt against Arizona? I'll take my shot on Kareem Hunt. 
I would go Lev Bell. Le'Veon Bell. Oh, you over Kareem? Yeah. All right, Le'Veon Bell. Or, Give me mustard. Or the. <laughs> yes. I wasn't gonna go there. I was gonna go with the prodigal son, David Montgomery, against Green Bay. I would go Lev Bell. Yeah, I would play Lev in that. I mean, I, I realize right. this is not a good matchup, and I, you know, that's that's a hundred percent true. But if you look at Lev Bell's season, going all the way back to Week Five, he's had two bad games, and every other game has not not been great. Like, I'm not saying, like, oh, he's top five, but he's been inside the top 24 running back every single week other than those two. He's He's been – there's just volume. You know, it's like Joe Mixon. It's the exact same thing as early season Joe Mixon. You're just choosing opportunity, right? Yes, that's that's all it is. I know he's going to touch the ball 15, you know, times, and that's just something rare in fantasy when you're talking about those – just those rough to start. I, I agree. Right, Bilal Powell's hurt. Ty I, Montgomery's hurt. I agree with the volume. But you know you're starting a player who's not going to score a touchdown. Correct. <laughs> that, and that's, I wanted to retort. In, in, I your wanted fan, to, in your fantasy playoffs, knowing your running back has li like pretty much no chance of scoring a touchdown, that sucks. Yeah, he, he's not, he's not going to touch him. Yeah. That's for sure. If there's a prop bet on that, bet the zero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, wanted to, I really wanted to say, well, no, he could. But How? The, the exactly. touchdown's not happening. You're hoping. You're that, hoping is that for ten, like, ten to one odds that he scores a touchdown? Fifteen to one. Uh, ten, 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 ten to one. Ten sounds to one okay. sounds okay. right. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you're hoping for a hundred combined yards. Yeah. You know, you which get, he could get. Absolutely, you get. You know, sixty. Oh, he's going to do some math. Rushing yards and forty. Oh my yards. gosh, you did it! I you did it. it. But you know, with several receptions, surprised and he didn't go fifty offs, fifty. And then, and then you're fine. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I just there was something something about him saying he could get a hundred yards. Now the way he could do that, it could be like fifty four, and then like forty six, sixty three. You yeah. know, it's like all right, really any combination. This. Mark Ingram, you're gonna play him in this matchup at home. I don't have any confidence to play Hollywood Brown at all. Uh, Hollywood Brown's floor is zero. Yeah, uh, that's what you you got a hundred and seventh and a hundred and fifth at the position the last two weeks. You always have a shot with him, but you haven't seen a real big play from him in a while. The Los Angeles Rams game was like 30-something yards receiving. He just happened to get in the end zone. The Jets are the, – the, the place where they're beatable is the fantasy wide receiver, 22nd, allowing 31 points per game to fantasy wide receivers. But it could just as easily be – I mean, the last several weeks, you look at the box score and you see Hayden Hurst and, and Boyle and Andrews, and I just don't have the confidence. Okay. You, it's not a volume play. Right. Would, would you agree with that? You're, yes. you're hoping I, for a big play. I agree that he is risky. but Dude, the, I, He's risky, but the matchup Ravens is Ravens wide great. receivers have a 43% market share. That's the... That's the when you, Lamar that's the loves thing. the tight end. When you look at the box score, and like last week, the big Hayden Hurst play, Nick Boyle caught a touchdown. Mark Andrews is returning to practice today, or yesterday. He returned to practice, and then we've been wondering how healthy is he for this game, how much is he needed? Are you just playing him if he's active? Because we've been here before with Mark Andrews. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, if Mark Andrews is active, I can't imagine that you just have a better option sitting out there. You know, if 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 Jack Doyle type options, I mean, you're going to play you're going to play Mark Andrews and, uh, you know, so sketchy. But would you play like in one of my leagues? I picked up Ian Thomas. No, oh, that's a that's a good one. So Ian Thomas, the Thursday night, but matchup you have to choose on Andrews. Yeah, I, I still think Andrews has the much higher ceiling. You know, you talk touchdowns, right? Mark Andrews has a much higher probability of getting a touchdown than Ian Thomas does. But I, I do think Ian Thomas's floor is safer right now. When you take away the injury and the matchup for Ian Thomas is is good. But so, would you, Mike? Would you consider doing like a uh, pick up Nick Boyle and wait on the activity? I, Boyle had ninety percent. Of snaps last week, Mark had, Andrews had nine percent. Yeah, who, who? What were the tar? What was the target split? Do you have it in front of you of, of Hurst and Boyle? Hurst has been really, really bad. Okay. Uh, if you look over the last eight weeks, Boyle has more productive games than Hurst does, and a yeah. higher a higher floor. Obviously, Hurst had the one giant. They they play. both they both are are not fantasy options you want to look at. I mean, you don't I, think so? I, I'm not. I'm not going to look at Boyle or or Hurst here. Okay. The Jets are surprisingly good at tight end, and it's not just because of or who they played. Playing defense against the tight end. Yes, uh, playing defense against the tight end. Uh, they're they're they match up very well. They shut down like their own tight ends. 
<laughs> yes. That's they, how good they are. Yeah. They're like, uh, Herndon, you're out of here. Yeah. Brian Griffin don't practice. Um, so, yeah, I'm not – you know, I'm willing to play Mark Andrews. It is dicey. That's where I was going to say with, with your matchup, I think it depends on, on your opponent. You know, if – if you're projected to win and the rest of your roster is better than the rest of his roster, I might roll Ian Thomas there just to avoid getting a possible goose or, you know, the yes, injury involved there. If you're playing against a really tough, you know, competition and you need you need all your team to have the best touchdown upside, then then I then I think that's Mark Andrews. I was just looking at this. This is unbelievable. The first 5 weeks of the season, the Ravens were bottom 10 against uh, they they were like middle of the pack against quarterback, bottom ten against running back, bottom ten. They were good. They were a plus matchup, and right now yes, they are I, such I, I, on the that's season. That's so funny. I totally forgot about it. On the season, they are excellent yeah. across the board now, and that includes. So th that means after week five, they've just been shut down central. Yeah, heading into this game, the Jets are thirty second in yards per play, thirty first in rushing yards, thirty second. In pressure rate allowed, it's going to be <laughs> That's bad. That's not good. If you believe, I want to say this, and I don't know if it has any value. So why say it, right? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> why I, not? I want, at this point, I want to hear it. But uh, if you believe that Vegas is right about this game, I would not be surprised if Gus Edwards has a very nice performance over the just comes second in half, and cleans of the game. up. Yeah, cleans up. Jets are uh, beaten up mentally, physically. The game's over, and Gus has a way of, of finding production at the end of these that makes matchups. Sense. All right. Let's go ahead and get into the mailbag. What do you say, Mike? You you in? You uh, in? Uh yep. Mailbag. Mailbag. Woo! All right. If you have a question, head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. That was baby macho man. Oh. <laughs> I get it. Oh yeah. Is he as cute as Baby Yoda? Cuter. Whoa. Impossible. Impossible. You ever Mike. seen a baby with those giant snowboater goggles and a huge beard? A baby? A baby with a beard. Yeah, he's also cute. really bald. The you, beard got me. You, yeah, you the glasses were cute. Yeah, the you, the cute was going and then the beard. The That's ba season two of Mandalorian. The baby Macho Man is. Baby Yoda there. versus baby Macho Man? Yeah, they're just going to lean in to the cute factor, which is winning. All right. The website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can go there. There's a start sit tool. It will help you with your matchup decisions. If we don't touch on something this week, Thursday, Friday, we have all of the matchup breakdowns. Uh, and so stay tuned for that. You can dial our voicemail hotline, 302 464 TFFB. We're going to jump into one of those questions now. What's up, ballers? This is Matt out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, just wondering if I roll out Lamar Jackson in tomorrow's Thursday night game or if I continue streaming Ryan Tannehill. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Ooh, Lamar Tannehill. Yeah, it's Lamar. It's Lamar it's, Jackson. It's Lamar. But what about – no, it's Lamar. <laughs> I just, I just want to be well, cute. I, I, I get it because Tannehill seems like an excellent option this week, but it's Lamar. His – he's just so good. And and even though Tannehill – Tannehill was a good matchup a couple weeks ago when he let you down a little bit and didn't give you the rushing yardage. and He's great, but he's Ryan Tannehill. This is Lamar Jackson. I, I totally understand. Lamar Jackson has the quad injury, and you worry, okay, he comes out, he – he aggravates it. They they're up. They want to rest him. That is within the realm of possibility, but it's not that it's without you know is it, within the realm of possibility for Tannehill is an equally bad game. Just on you know he plays whole game and doesn't throw touchdowns. So both of them have a low floor, but only Lamar has the ceiling that that he has right now in fantasy football. Yeah, Tannehill was twenty second two weeks ago against Indianapolis in a game that we mm. thought maybe he'd do better. Lamar has never finished 22nd the entire year and is uh, he's just automatic. And this team, in my opinion, they're too smart. They're too well run. They don't play a guy in this situation that you need to win a Super Bowl unless he can play. And he says he's fine. And he's built of a different uh, material I know, than it really, most people. It really stinks for half of everybody in the playoffs right now. Those of you playing against Lamar. Jackson that you should be is, afraid I, I am very we are playing against Adam yeah. Rank and he has Lamar Jackson and I was really hoping that they gave him a, just a rest a heal up week just to get better Lamar yeah yeah probably Selfish. not gonna happen all right let's hit another question what's up ballers this is Brian in Kansas City hey I am weak at wide receiver I had Robert Woods and Marvin Jones Jones got placed on IR 
Sammy Watkins is on the waiver wire staring me in the face, the Lizard King himself. <laughs> Do I dare pick him up and play him? Thanks for your help. Are you a masochist? <laughs> <laughs> nope. I, it takes all of my willpower to restrain the amount of things I want to say against Sammy Watkins when his name comes up. Go pick up, uh, let's see, who could possibly be on the waiver wire? Anthony Miller. Yep. Could be on there. I would play him. Chris Conley could be on the waiver wire. I'd play Robbie Anderson against Baltimore over Sammy Watkins. Okay. What about – Obviously, we've got Zach Pascal if he's still out there. What about what about Marcus Johnson? I'd play Marcus counterpart? Johnson three times before I play wow. Sammy Watkins I once. I think I would as well. What about Cole Beasley? Let's, Mike, would you mind reading the wide receiver depth chart for every team in the National Football League? <laughs> All right, all right, I got a good one for you, Andy. I would play yes. Yes, uh, Al Borland okay. just sent me a message. He says he's got a good one. That, that, it's, this that's is the it. One. Would you play Justin Watson, Yes, superstar, yes. over yes. Sammy Watkins? I will not put Sammy Watkins into my roster, on my bench, in any circumstance, ever, again. So you would play Justin Watson? Yes, I'd play superstar Justin Watson. Yeah, Over we've got Sammy the sound bites. We've got the sound bite. <laughs> Cut it, Brooks. I need that sound bite. Thank oh, you. Oh my! You fell gosh. right into the trap. Yes, when you when you put those two up to next to each oh, other. Oh, this will be cut out without context, my man. There is no no next to nothing. Oh no, I know. But what what has Sammy been tweeting anything cool lately? Oh yeah, I'm sure he has. Yeah, uh, he's. <laughs> I'll find something. You get to the next question. All right. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you agree? Do you play everybody over Sammy? Yeah. Yeah, I do. It's not even a good matchup. It's Denver. So, I mean, Sammy Watkins has – I mean, I made a top 45 <clears throat> bet with Sammy Watkins and I lost. Yeah. Did, you, did you know that consciousness consists of expanding wave functions of quantum energy? Quantum means an awakening of the mystical. Today, science tells us that the essence of nature is power. Yeah, that's that's wide receiver forty eight stuff right there. <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> moving on. Okay. Oh, Sammy, I'm so sorry, but this is just Sammy Watkins. You've done our listeners dirty for too long, Sammy. This yeah. is recompense. Sammy Watkins. You no one to blame but yourself. Since yeah. <laughs> since week one, where he was the wide receiver one. Okay, so you've you've chopped that game I chopped off. Chopped one game off the okay. entirety of the season. He is the wide receiver. 80? He, 78. Oh, baby. And he has played the whole year with, with Patrick Mahomes. Yes, and, and Andy Reid and this system, and he is the wide receiver. How is that possible? It's impossible. But what, what mere <laughs> mortals, you know, we don't understand the ways of the lizard. No, it's more of a golf <laughs> scoring system in he, the lizard community. He has one. It's lowest points wins. He has a single week in that entire stretch inside the top 40 wide receivers. And. Mind you, that was he was the wide receiver thirty, so it was not a great game. That's just incredible work. We vibrate, we dream, we are reborn. We exist as biofeedback. Thank you, Sammy. <sighs> See, I, I know, Mike, that you have found something that can produce quotes like that, but I don't know whether you're reading Sammy's actual Twitter or whether you're reading that website. You'll never know. <laughs> we'll never know. All right. Uh we we must digress from the Lizard King. Do we start James Conner if he returns this week? It's a Bills matchup. It's Man. Sunday night. It's let's, Sunday night. Let's set oh. the table though, Mike, because right now I would say no. But let's say he's, you know, he's at practice and the confidence builds in Thursday and Friday. And he's out there. Fighting for their playoff lives. James Conner is greater sign all the other running backs by a lot. When yes. he's healthy. Yes. Last time you took the chance on him. He destroyed your week in the, and he played a couple plays, hurt the shoulder again. So as of yesterday, Mike Tomlin was not ready to say if James Conner or Juju would play. Pivot, if you're deciding <sighs> yeah. right now. Yeah, I, I, I think you have to pivot. You, he, here's a player who has been injured on and off the whole season. Even when he's been in the game, he's been banged up. He has not shown himself to be capable of the workload. Is currently injured. I don't think you want to rely on that. Also, I, I have to read this because I just went to Sammy Watkins' most recent tweet. Uh -huh. And this, is real. this isn't from one of your silly generators. This is actually... How Sam dare you? <laughs> right, yes. This is actually you, Sammy you're Watkins. You're a generator. Look, he's, he's talking about... You know, Victory Monday. This uh, congratulations to Sammy. He says we have went through many phases and energies shift, 
as a team and battle through them. The journey have now been aligned and set. The energies, the vibes are mutual. Our souls are now connected. With that alone, we will be a force that cannot be stopped. Oh! Cold. Cold. Blood. And you said I have a generator. <laughs> yeah, Sammy has a generator. <laughs> I mean, that was real. He, he typed all that. How many care? Like, why does Sammy Watkins have 3,000 characters per tweet? <laughs> Lizard rules. Um, <laughs> I hear both producers <laughs> cackling. <laughs> In the corner. Oh, dear. All right. Twitter question from Arturo. Devonta Freeman has been good the last two weeks, but he plays San Francisco. Where does he rank for you guys? Not low enough. Uh, I don't think he – I mean, we've talked about so many of these players. Like, I, I would, play would you Lev play Bell. Freeman or Lev Bell? I will play Lev Bell uh, w over, over Freeman for sure. The strange thing is San Francisco managed to give up 46 points and not allow a productive fantasy running back in New Orleans last week. And he was good last week against Carolina, running back 11, but, I mean, you know, 2-2 two -two start of the week, but that's because he played the Carolina Panthers. He was not very good the last couple of weeks before that, and he's playing San Francisco on the road. I'd, I'd be looking for another option. I'd play yeah. Mostert in the same game over him. I'd probably play Brita in the same game over him. I would not go that far. Okay. Most are, you could probably talk me into it. I mean, I, it, it is a similar argument to Lev Bell in the sense that Freeman should get the ball a lot. Yes, he should. So, you know, what do you need as a team? Right? Right. What do you need? Do you need upside from your running back? Because you probably don't get it with Bell or Freeman, right? Correct. But I, I do think that Bell has shown more consistency through the year. Freeman has been bad plenty of times this season. Um, you know, and, and this is a really tough matchup against San Francisco. All right, I want to muse on something for a second. It's a question that I have, and it's a question that actually Brooks brought up last week. We didn't get to talk about it on the show, but people have. I, I'm curious where you guys stand on this because I think my mind is shifting. But there is uh, there is the question out there of once the playoffs are set in your league, mm -hmm. the regular season's over, there are some, there's a camp out there that said, if you didn't make the playoffs, you have no right or ability to touch the waiver wire, sign, release players. You should be banned, stopped. Your team should it's, be frozen. It's impermissible because there's nothing you're doing. to. You're not playing. You're not playing. And then there's a camp that says or tries to say that uh, it should just maintain the same cadence as the regular season and you should not have an advantage as a playoff team and only compete with a couple people for waiver wire pickups. What's the right answer? Oh, I'm so happy you phrase it like that because there is one. <laughs> Look, I am firmly in the camp that when you are out of the playoffs, you should continue playing. And I think there are a lot of reasons for that camp and only one reason I could think of for the other. So here, here's, here's the reasons I would say. One, you're going to be better the following year. There's no doubt. You can't just – stop playing fantasy football and really feel like you kept up with it through these important weeks in the real NFL, 14, 15, 16. I mean, where, where, you know, 17, where, <laughs> you know, I remember back before I was an analyst, I would, when I was out, I would quit. And then I'd come in the next year and all these players that kind of broke out from here along the way, there were waiver wire stars. I was kind of out of the loop on them. I, you know, and it wasn't like I stopped watching football. So that's one reason. Another reason is, look, teams have prepared depth. You know, should should the team that has better depth be punished when they're in the championship matchup because the the other team that's in the championship matchup only now has to compete against them and they were ill prepared. I mean, I I do I I am on the other side. Okay, let's. I've changed. I had always. You're a I've, turncoat. I am, and Mike, yes. I'm guessing that means you're on on Jason's side. A real Benedict Arnold over here. Let Let me explain why. First of all, you made a compelling argument, but not for this rule, in my opinion. You made a compelling argument for our listeners to keep playing even when you lose, which. Sure. I think that's great. We, we talk about that all the time. You want to stay up to date on what's going on, but you're really not, you're not playing for anything. You're not even competing against a real opponent in a lot of these leagues. You just get randomly assigned somebody 
Now, if you're on sleeper, you're in the toilet bowl, except for the loser each week is the one that moves on in the toilet bowl. And, uh, yeah, and you don't want to end up in the toilet. No. Okay. Sure. Sure. But but here here's the problem that I have is I think that if you look at the situation and you say everybody should just compete for waiver wires positions, that's I don't think that's genuine. I think the real the what you're if you open it up to everybody, people are signing people to keep them away from people. They're not signing them to help your team because you don't care if you win or lose because the season's over and you're not competing against anybody. So the actual motivations. If you say, hey, I want the same playing field that I have during the regular season, I don't think that they exist in actuality. I think that people will only sign. Like, I'm not paying attention in a league I'm out from a waiver wire standpoint. And if I sign somebody off of waivers, I'm doing it with the mindset of, I either need to do this to keep the league uh, fidelity of the league, or I'm doing it on the basis of, I want to keep somebody that I don't want to see win a championship away from somebody which is not the motivation by which I sign people during the entire season. It's still great motivation. <laughs> yeah, that's weird because that, that, that is your motivation yeah. for doing it. Here's, You've talked about this reason, for years. Here's reason number one why you should be allowed to uh, make waiver claims whenever you want. Because screw you. That's why. I don't want you to win. If I'm out, I'm burning the whole thing to the ground. You can kiss my butt. Whoa. Tell me I can't add people out the waiver wire. And why should now the number six seed all of a sudden they're like they've they've now been given an easier path to the waiver wire. Like you're there because they're higher on the priority. They will break the tie. Why you're we're supposed to be rewarding the top seeds, and now you're rewarding rewarding the lower seeds. All I was saying is that it, it, during the duration of the regular season, you're signing people for a purpose. For your own team. You're yes. not necessarily trying to collude against an owner that you want to lose. Uh, that's all I'm saying. It's I want so, everyone I, to lose. Right, but you're you're picking and choosing, and some other owners aren't doing that. So I, I just think the situation... I used to be in your camp, 100%. But then I realized that nobody's actually playing like they do during the regular season in the playoffs. So at that point in time, the playoff team should be competing for players. Oh, so I, I will I, say, I, I think... like. Your league should fix this. There should be you should be rewarding people every single week. If you're in a money league, I agree with that. If that if, exists, then it changes. If you're the in equation. a money league, it, there should be a payout for high score every single week, and there because, should be a, a penalty for last place, so people are playing yes. for that. You know, in our league of record, well, last the, place doesn't matter once you don't have records, though. The records are figured out. Sure, but like we we've got you know the picks that happen. You know, I barely missed Super Philip Rivers. I barely missed the the playoffs, and so I me and the the next seed. Uh, that missed the playoffs are playing a three-week playoff for who gets the better draft order next year. I mean, those things should be in all leagues so that everybody can keep playing, and then you can, and then that that takes the the whiny uh, guy out. That's like you shouldn't be allowed to play because I'm the best. <laughs> I think that if you can create systems in your league that make everybody want to be competitive from weeks one through 16 everybody that's the best case scenario for any league because Agreed. then it's, then it's a hundred percent what you want it's competitive each and every week people are fighting on the waiver wire and then the world's a better place do it foot clan leagues so maybe that's just an overarching league uh, creation commissioner i tip. agree all right we want to thank today's studio sponsor pristine auction a keenan allen signed jersey for 51 dollars and 60 cents yeah, it's so cheap. Sammy Hagar wouldn't even buy it. You know oh, what I mean? Can't, can't it's just fifty. He can't. It's not even at the right level. <laughs> Pristineauction.com. <laughs> Previews tomorrow. It's going to be a fun week. Oh goodness! Pay attention on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We'll break some uh, injury news as we get it. We'll see you tomorrow, Footland. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Foot Clan, remember this holiday season, immerse yourself in all your favorite holiday class classics with a new home theater system from Sonos. I have multiple rooms decked out with Sonos gear. My loft, it, it sounds great. 
because I have a Sonos sound system up there, get wireless speakers, get get Amazon Alexas, Alexas and speakers that actually sound good. Go to Sonos.com to learn more and complete your holiday shopping.